John knows that Walter Lord Brown owned a number of properties in Grimsby that made reference to Ireland. He built two houses for his children called Altamont and Oranmore, named after two of Ireland's most important families. Well, there it is, Altamont. The Earls of Altamont, predecessors of the Marquises of Sligo, and the Lords Oranmore and Brown. There it is, Oranmore. That's quite extraordinary. It's quite a statement. But Walter Lord Brown's biggest statement was the school he built. Hello, there we are. It's Westport House. So this was Westport House, named after the great Westport House in Ireland. I'm hoping we're going to find out some stronger connection, proof-wise, of um, the connection to the family in Ireland. Hello, John. Hello. I'm Sue Isaac. Hello. Lovely to meet you. Looking through our archives the other day and yeah. found this prospectus, um, an old prospectus of Westport House. I made a copy for you because I note that the headmaster Walter Lord Brown, who I believe is your great-grandfather. He, yes indeed, he was. Oh, Interestingly. Is, I've never seen this before, no. this is fantastic. There he is, photograph. Oh, there he is, that's the first photograph I've seen of him yeah. too. And actually there he calls himself He calls Lord himself Brown. Lord Brown, that's fantastic. Look at him, he looks as though he loves that too. Do we know what date this is? Or yes, it's on 18, it says at the front, oh, 18, it is, actually. 1852. And he was a, formerly a mathematical master of Queen Elizabeth Grammar School, Cranbrook, Kent. Kent, yes. That's fantastic, isn't it? Fantastic. Establishing Westport House School here in 1852 was a shrewd move by Walter Lord Brown. Grimsby had always made its living from the sea. But in 1848, the railway came to town. Walter Lord Brown's Westport House School was astute in offering vocational subjects like mathematics and land surveying, subjects that would have had far greater appeal to the sons of Grimsby's hard-working captains of industry than the more traditional Latin and Greek. And Walter Lord Brown made them pay for it. Uh, 1850, it's 80 guineas per annum. That's not cheap. And then washing and seat at church, eight guineas. So they had to pay? Had to pay they... for a seat at church, otherwise you <laughs> stood, presumably. And pay for the laundry as well, presumably. And pay for your laundry. Gracious me. <laughs> what we've got to find out now is what connection exactly is to Westport Children. County Mayo. Mm. Walter has set us a real puzzle here. There's all these clues, but no proof. It's frustrating in a way, but it's all pointing in the right direction. He can't possibly have done all this without there being some truth behind it. The only clue to Walter's life before Grimsby is emblazoned across his Westport School prospectus. Mathematical master of Queen Elizabeth Grammar School, Cranbrook, Kent. Still a grammar school, the building hasn't changed much since John's great-grandfather's day. It's possible there might be some record of Walter's time here that connects him and John to Irish aristocracy. Similarities to Westport House School, I must say. Good morning. Good morning, Peter Allen. John, do How come in. You? Well, this is where, pretty certainly, your great grandfather actually taught. This very room. Do you have any record of him being here? Sadly, no. I, I've, I've been through all the old oh. documents that we have. Uh, we know that he was not here by the mid-1860s, but that's no surprise no, to you that, if, he, if, he, no, if he couldn't possibly there. be. 
This is the prospectus from the school that he built in Grimsby called oh. Westport House School. Established 1852. In 1850. So I imagine he was here in the sort of late 1840s, that's what I'm thinking. He's put down here especially, you see, formerly mathematical master of Queen Elizabeth Grammar School, Cranbrook, Kent. But if he was boasting that this school was of distinction in 1850-51, that would be ill-founded. Mm. Can I read to you the description of the school which we have? Mm -hmm. About that very time, the headmaster was a man called the Reverend Davis, and one old Cranbrookian wrote, the teaching was atrocious. In the playground, there was a shed where we washed our hands for dinner. Once or twice a week, it was converted into a slaughterhouse where sheep and pigs were killed. <laughs> Uh, a, an earlier historian of the school has written, with the death of Davis in 1850, the school reached one of its low watermarks. <laughs> That's so, so fascinating, because it, it's turning out that um, this man, though we, we, I think, always felt that he was somewhat, um, no, not exactly pompous, but full of himself, in a <laughs> sense, and a certain ego, because it's always, if you notice here, it's got Mr. Walter Lord uh -huh. Brown, which is more important than anything else, you know, I mean, it's sort of uh, embellished writing, you know. So Absolute I noticed words. the date right at the bottom as, as 1879. No, that's very good, well spotted there. Yes, it is, 1879. By 1879, this school, which I said just now was rubbish in 1850, was no longer rubbish. Uh, Cranbrook was, by this time, recognised as one of the premier boarding schools in Kent. It may well be that your man, however undistinguished his time his in time Cranbrook, here actually uh, was, was to hurt. some extent, now cashing in yeah. on yeah. what was uh, a school of rather high rep distinctly high reputation by the, by the 1870s. There is some doubt that Walter Lord Brown was even at Cranbrook. If he was, then it taught him there was money to be made in education. But the school hasn't revealed any further evidence of a connection with Ireland. Instead, what is emerging is a picture of a man with an impressive talent for spin and self-promotion. This is a classic example of someone embellishing his CV but there's no record of Walter ever working here and certainly nothing about his Irish connection. Walter's marriage announcement revealed that his father, William Richard Brown, was head of the Bond Office in London 